What's up, everybody? This is episode number 241 of Truth Telling with Elizabeth D'Alto, and today is a solo episode. It's a big year over here. 2018 is amazing. A lot of changes happening, just in the sense of new ways of being and doing things, new bodies of work coming through, new structures, new systems, new guests, all kinds of amazing new stuff. But really, the new stuff is always just born out of the old stuff. It's kind of how evolution works. So welcome to the show. Today, what I'm geeking out on that I'm so excited to share with you is something I recently created called the Trust Assessment. And I'm not just going to geek out on the assessment itself. I'm going to geek out on the topic of trust. And I keep saying geek out because you really might have to slow this one down or listen more than once because I am. I am. I'm really going to go on some tangents. I'm very excited about this. Some of it might make sense to you. Some of it might not. Um, Hopefully you can follow. I have faith in you all. You are smart people. But basically, I'm going to be nerding out to the highest degree and giving you a little peek into how my brain and my creative process works. So let's start here. Why trust? Trust is the number one problem people don't know they have, and more specifically, self-trust. So if you've been following me for any period of time listening to this show, if you've done any of my programs or any of my workshops, come to any of my weekends or events or anything like that, um, for many years now, you know that I talk about trust a lot. And the thing is, we're so conditioned into black or white thinking that we often label ourselves good or bad at a thing without looking at the fullness of the thing. And so this is something that I've been watching for years as I help my students and my clients learn how to trust themselves more deeply and how to trust in life more generally. And one of the things I realized is that If you were to ask in general how much someone trusts, first off, they're usually going to associate it with trusting other people. And then if you redirect them to self-trust specifically, most people's mind is going to think of how much they don't trust themselves. Like we default to the negative, we default to finding the problem or what's wrong. And what I've noticed over the years after working with so many people around this is that most people really do trust themselves at least a little bit, but it's categorical. It's in one or two areas of life, and it's not across the board. Does that mean that trusting yourself across the board in all the categories of your life is impossible? No. What it means is that you haven't learned how to do it and that you just don't have the skills, the tools, or the practices, all of which are learnable things. And so that's why I created this trust assessment. So in other areas where people don't trust themselves, they beat themselves up about it so much, it practically or completely ends up negating where they do trust themselves. And I'm sure some of you listening can relate to that. I've pointed this out to numerous clients and students over the years and witnessing the relief that washes over them when they realize that they do in fact trust themselves sometimes is always really sweet. So the truth is, most of us are an interesting mix of trusting and not trusting in different areas of our lives to varying degrees. So the purpose of the trust assessment is to help people hone in on what those areas are specifically so that you can gather strength and confidence from the places where you do already have some trust and see for sure, backed by data, where you trust less so that you can work on it. Now, those of you who know me know I'm not really one for digging around for problems, but trust is such a universal problem, and I've been teaching on it for so many years in so many different contexts and seeing the massive impact it has on people's lives that I knew this was an important next evolution in my work, and I also knew it would be really valuable for all kinds of people. So for those of you who are students of Wild Soul Movement interested in ta- or you're interested in taking that program someday, attending a weekend workshop, or even going through teacher training, that body of work isn't going anywhere. This whole work around trust is just a different, a different lane that I'm getting in, but it doesn't take over wild soul movement. It's just its own thing. And so this is the fun part about being human. 
we're dynamic and we get to hold a lot. And so for me personally, I get to do both. I get to actually run two companies now. This new, deeper, and more widely appealing trust work and wild soul movement. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to geek out on exactly how the trust assessment works and let you know about the steps that follow it. And I share this for a couple of reasons. I share this so as you listen, you can have some insights and you can have your own ahas about how trust impacts your life and in the different areas. But also, too, you know, for those of you who are creators who make things in the world, to give some, you know, behind the scenes of creative process. And um, I want to refer you over to a podcast interview I did recently with my friend Karen Christensen over at Dreamcatchers District, because we also talked a lot about creative process in that interview and how everyone's built really differently. So I always like to give a caveat, you know, I know myself really well and I know how my creative process works. So hopefully this can be inspiring for you and maybe give you some insights into your own creative process. But certainly don't be thinking that my way is the right way. My way is just a way and, you know, aspects of it might work for you or really might not. So remember to just always take things with a grain of salt and make sure that they resonate for you rather than like comparing yourself or thinking you need to hold yourself to my process or my standards. You know, we're all very, very unique. So if you've listened to the show for any period of time, you know that I love assessments and typology tests. I love these things because anything that helps me learn more about myself, how I'm built, and how I operate, not only helps me to love and accept myself and move through the world with more skill and ease, but as well, constantly reminds me how differently we're all built, which makes it much easier to be compassionate with others, even the most challenging people. Now, one of the downsides of a typology, things like Myers-Briggs or the Enneagram, um, even things like human design or astrology, is they can box people in and have them thinking that, you know, that's just who and how they are and that they're limited or that it's fixed. And, you know, that's never true. It's always nice to take these tests and see how you operate. But of course, you know, there's, there's margins for error. There's standard deviations. And so those things, while they are helpful, you know, they're not hard and fast. And we always still need to leave room for ourselves to change, to expand, to grow, to evolve beyond the typologies, which is why instead of creating archetypes here, I went with a score. So that's why it's the trust assessment. This way you can use this to measure your progress over time as well. And and another thing you may or may not know about me is I'm obsessed with progress. Like what's the point of doing personal development work or self-help or even spiritual study and practice? If you aren't going to make some kind of progress, if you're not going to eventually approach things differently, better, or with more ease or more skill or capability than you did before. And so many of these concepts are intangible and they're harder to measure. So a cool thing about the trust assessment is it is a way to measure your progress as you do any kind of growth or transformation work over the course of your lifetime on your journey. You can come back and retake it to see how you're doing and if or how you've improved. It's a way within this wild world of personal development to see if the work is actually working rather than getting stuck in the hamster wheel of consuming books, courses, podcasts, and more. Not that there's anything wrong with those things, but they can just be another procrastination tool, another way of checking out, and another way of bypassing if you're not actually getting the results. So the results of the assessment help you to focus on what is the highest leverage thing to work on. And those of you who do personal development or self-help or spiritual work, you can probably relate to this, not knowing where to start. So the trust assessment is really designed to show you where to start at any point in your journey. So whether you're someone who's kind of new on this path or whether you're someone who's been doing work for years, it'll still be able to show you where to start or where to focus. Obviously, for growth-oriented people, the work is never done, but we can certainly waste a lot of time seeking and searching and poking around. So I'm really excited to create and offer this tool that people can now use to hone in on the specifics and make their journeys more focused and more intentional, more pragmatic. So let me tell you how this thing works. There's the trust assessment, which it's live now. If you're listening to this, it's up and running and it's live. You can go to thetrustassessment.com. 
Now, it's not like a short thing. This isn't like a what, what's your Harry Potter, what Harry Potter character are you quiz that you would take on Facebook. It's actually 64 questions. Again, because it is a deep and thorough assessment. It's based on research. It's based on observation and working with thousands of students across three different industries over the year. Essentially, for the last 16 years of my life, everything that I've done has led me up to this point to be able to create this assessment. And so when you go over there, you don't go with only like 35 seconds. You want to go with at least like five minutes or even 10 minutes so that you can really take your time. Um, it's super simple to take. There's instructions. Um, everything is ranking on a scale of strongly agree to strongly disagree. Um, and as always, and it says this right there on the page when you go over to it, you know, trust your gut, right? Like don't overanalyze it. Don't overthink it. And really, and here's how I, what I love, here's the intersection of trust and truth telling is that the trust assessment is an opportunity for you to tell the truth to yourself about yourself. And so um, when you answer the questions, don't answer it aspirationally. Don't answer them based on who you want to be or you, who you would hope to be. Answer them based on how you're showing up right now. Everything you enter there is confidential. Like it goes into my system, but it will not be shared. Like your results would not be shared with anyone but you. And obviously, you know, thousands and thousands of people are going to be going through this thing. I'm not going to be looking at everyone's specific results or judging you <laughs> or like noticing like, oh, I recognize that person's name from Instagram. Look what she's struggling with. Like I'm, I'm literally never going to log in and look at whose results are whose. So it's totally private for you. So you'll go through, you'll answer as honestly as possible um, the 64 questions, and then you'll get a general report that will have your score. The scores exist on a scale of 1 to 320, and you'll receive some write-ups and some follow-up emails with some advice and some insights based on whether your score classifies as low, mid-level, or high. Now, this initial score that you get is just a general, ins general score, you know, based on your overall results, how much do you trust yourself, scale of 1 to 320, and is that low, medium, or high? Beyond that, I created an advanced report. And the advanced report gives you a little more data. And the other thing I'm really excited about this assessment is we're, we're gathering data. This is going to help us over the next several decades of my life as we continue to evolve in and around the work and the programs and courses and things that we create and put out into the world um, based on data. Like we're this, so for you all, it's an assessment for your own experience. And for us, it's actually a research tool. So um, I know you've heard me mention this before, but I'm also a Virgo and I love efficiency. So um, this thing serves several different purposes. So in your advanced report, you, which is very inexpensive, by the way, um, it's only 19 bucks if you get it right away. You get a breakdown of not just the general score, but how much you trust yourself in the four major life areas, which are health, wealth, relationships, and self-mastery. Now, I know some of you might be sitting there going, there's way more life categories than that. But really, if you zoom out, you will notice that every other category you can think of can be housed under one of those four. health wealth, relationships, or self-mastery. And so the advanced report shows you your scores in each category. And this is where you can really have an even more specific idea on what you can work on and how to work on it. And there's also some cool videos, um, just some short, like three to five minute free videos that I've made um, for people who get the advanced report for some more specific insights into how you can apply trust to and how you can develop trust within health, wealth, relationships, and self-mastery. So beyond that, there's some workshops. Uh, there's a course that I'll be offering starting in April um, if anyone's interested. But coming back to the trust assessment itself, as I've been teaching people in various contexts for 16 years now, I've come to understand that everyone learns differently. And in order to commit to something and follow through, people need accountability. Two consistent forms of accountability are incentives and deadlines. 
So throughout the progression through the offerings beyond the trust assessment, I've built in plenty of incentives and deadlines. One of the number one things I'm dedicated to in all of my work is putting more attention towards helping people follow through and finish, not just sign up. And obviously, you know, this is something that sets me apart from a lot of people who teach, you know, self-help, personal development, spiritual things. People are just trying to like fill their courses. And personally, I'm really, I mean, I could have more people in things, but if they're not finishing, if they're not following through, and if they're not actually doing the work, like what's the friggin' point? So, and I'm sure some of you can relate to that. You've signed up for things or you've started things that you don't finish. Trust is a great area to stop doing that in because it will positively impact every area of your life, which again, I broadly categorize into health, wealth, relationships, and self-mastery. And within those categories are subcategories, which I talk about in the Trust Assessment Advanced Workshop. Like, for example, health is broken down into physical, mental, emotional, and energetic health. Relationships is broken down into personal, professional, family, and romantic relationships. For years now, I've been doing this process with my clients and students called the life inventory. Um, For a while, I only did it in my Untame Yourself weekend workshops which cost a couple thousand dollars to go to. And then I started teaching it in one of my programs, two of my programs actually, my mentorship last year, and then one of my other trainings that I launched last fall. Um, And again, those things are not always accessible to everyone or the timing isn't always right for everyone. So I built the life inventory into the trust assessment, which is really cool. So anyone can benefit now from the life inventory. And again, so often when we don't feel good or we're stressed, we make blanket statements about life being hard or about things being wrong with us instead of honing in on exactly what's causing the stress. So another really cool thing about the trust assessment and what your results will reveal is it will really give you an opportunity to be compassionate with yourself about what's going on in your world while also being specific about what really does need your attention. And instead of just putting Band-Aids on stuff, It'll help you choose um, deeper, deeper work that you can actually do in these things to get to the roots. Because this is why a lot of people stay in the same repeating realities or like in the same loop of problems and have the same experiences over and over again, just, you know, they look different or the circumstances might be different, is because they are handling their, just the symptoms of their problems. This is why a lot of people, you know, get addictive or they numb, right? Because they just want, they don't want to feel the pain instead of just like going in and pulling it up at the roots so they don't have to deal with it anymore. And so life inventories and breaking things down into categories and subcategories the way the trust assessment does will help you really see what's truly causing the issues. So, you know, the metaphor I use is if you have a garden and there's weeds in the garden and you just trim the weeds or you just they're in the lawn and you just mow the lawn, you didn't get rid of the weeds. You just trimmed it. You just mowed it down. So it's going to grow back. But if you pull that thing up by the roots, it's really gone. So this is what we're hoping to help you do with your issues. And the reason I geek out on that is because I'm a huge fan of anything that shows people that they're better than they think they are and that guides them towards how to solve, resolve, or improve their problems or current situations. And something else that's built into the trust assessment is what I call uniqueness factors. So when I was designing the questions and when I was choosing what I call the reliable trust indicators, I was really factoring in people who come from all walks of life. So the uniqueness factors are your your programming and conditioning, um, your values and beliefs. So like what has been conditioned into you, how you were brought up. And then the other one is, you know, your, your ancestry, who you are, where you're from, what makes you who you are, so that, you know, this isn't something that just works for, you know, privileged white people. This isn't something that just works for the 1% or people with money and access to things. This, this is really useful information that um, no matter who you are, where you're from, what you do and don't have access to can reveal some important personal truths to you. I'm also a firm believer And I know some people would probably disagree with me on this, and I'm cool with that, but I really don't believe that at their core, anyone is a bad person. Obviously, there are people who have so many issues, so much unresolved stuff, who might have deep mental or emotional problems or trauma or just uh, emotional wounds 
and so little trust, confidence, energy, faith, or support, or are just so unskilled in things that would really help them out, it's not their fault. They're not actually bad people. They just don't know how to be better people. Um, You can't know what you don't know. So the trust assessment is a way to show you what you don't know. And it also helps people to get out of the seeking loop and into the territory of finding solutions. I posted this quote on Instagram the other day. People romanticize their plans but dread the execution. The magic you're looking for is in the work you're avoiding. This is not just an affliction people have in their professional lives. People do this in everything. They want to improve their health or feel better, and they get all caught up in the planning and programs and information, but don't execute or follow through. You've probably heard me mention this before, but there are even studies that show, um, specifically to weight loss, but I know it works on other things too, that like at at the point of sale, the point of purchase, when someone buys a new diet or even a new pair of sneakers to go to the gym or joins a gym, they feel as if they've already gotten the result. This is why motivation typically wanes after that. People want to get out of debt or get a new job or start saving money. They fantasize about what it would be like or complain about their current circumstances and spend more time listing all the reasons why now isn't a good time instead of just taking the steps to get to where they want to be, even if it's small steps over time. We're so conditioned that everything needs to be bigger, better, faster, stronger that we've become averse as a culture to just showing up, doing our work, and letting incremental change happen. So again, what I love about the trust assessment is it guides people, the results and the ensuing reports and workshops, guide people towards what specifically, how they can be taking those little steps along the way. If you've ever seen the movie What About Bob with Bill Murray and Richard Dreyfuss, you know, he talks about baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. And That is not something most people want to hear, especially most Americans. They don't want baby steps. They want to swing for the fences. They want the solution now. They want the thing that works five minutes ago. They want the result tomorrow, right? But that's not how you actually get results that last. And any of you that have actually overcome big things or achieved big things that weren't fleeting, you know this to be true. It's it's an inconvenient truth. It's not what people want, but it is the truth. I had a student recently share this feedback after taking a beginner level life training I offer. Here's what she said. At first, I was disappointed I hadn't had a massive change, which by the way, I'll let you know, this was a six week program. She continued, but when I thought about how I had basically shifted an inner mountain an inch, I realized that maybe it didn't outwardly look much different, but it was still massive progress. Before starting the program, I had kind of thought I would come out fully actualized and that everything would click into place. Instead, looking back over all my notes and thinking over what has changed, I've noticed a lot of little shifts. I feel like I'm communicating better with my partner and I'm able to receive information from him better. And my relationship with my mother is less tense and more caring since I'm not taking on her stuff and judging her opinions, decisions, and communication style anymore. And what I love about this, it's so funny, I explicitly told these students in the beginning of the program that was six weeks long that this was exactly how it would go. Lots of small changes would add up into major shifts. I love the way she put it here, moved a mountain an inch, but notice she was hoping to be self-actualized in six weeks. At nowhere, in anywhere where I described this program, Did I promise that that would be a thing? Because I know that those types of results, that's just not real. That's just not how things work. People can have massive shifts and massive breakthroughs, but then there's always integration work to upload it into your system as a lifelong way of being, to really integrate the results and the outcome and make it the new normal rather than just like this big one-time experience. So often people want to blast through the mountains, but it's rare that things work that way. I've watched so many people over the years approach growth like they should be able to solve all their problems in 21 days, 60 days, 90 days, in all areas of life, love, relationships, health, money, and et cetera. But it's so rare that those changes are sustainable in the long run that people can keep them going. So again, I'm so, so excited to be taking all of this knowledge and experience I have from being in this industry for many years from doing my own personal work, from working with so many clients in so many different capacities and contexts, and innovating on the process and creating different solutions for people that they can actually sustain. 
when my new site, elizabethdialto.com, comes out at the end of March, you're going to see my new tagline, which is reimagining higher education. And I'm not talking about academia. Someone told me, oh, I don't know if you should say that. People are going to be really offended. This is not someone that knows me very well because they didn't realize that I could give a shit about offending anyone. Um, by higher education, I mean higher awareness, higher responsibility, and higher consciousness. I mean the things that we do not learn in grad school or university and that most of our parents didn't know either, and so they didn't teach us as well. When we aren't aware, we can't do better. When we don't take responsibility, we often cause more harm than good or find ourselves perpetually stuck in or repeating the same crappy cycles over and over again. And when we aren't conscious, it's like being asleep, just going through the motions, taking what's being offered to us, instead of getting curious and expanding our minds, hearts, and perceptions for the greater good. Now, I want to come back to why trust is so important here as a linchpin to all of this. The definition of a linchpin is a person or thing vital to an enterprise or organization. So let's just call the enterprise your life here, right? Your growth, your evolution, your expansion. Trust is so huge because think of the things that you struggle with, whatever they are. Maybe it's making decisions. Maybe it is choosing the right people to partner with in life or love or business, or friendships even. Maybe it has to do with a career path. Maybe it has to do with even, even your health, right? What to eat, how to move your body. Maybe it has to do with how to invest and spend and save your money or how to get out of debt. Maybe it has to do with where you want to live or how you're showing up in the world or how to express yourself or how to resolve past issues or problems or traumas or anything like that. I mean, we could list so many various things that relate here. When it comes to anything like that, we're living in a time where there is so much information available. And now in our age of social media, where we're so digitally plugged in, I'm not even going to say connected because for some people it's just plugged in and it's this um, kind of false illusion of connection. But with so much information, I remember a while back sharing some ridiculous stat about literally that we take in hundreds to thousands more times information now than we did even just like two centuries ago. And so with so much to process through, and our brains are are really massive processing machines, they're computers essentially, but with so much, when you don't have the skill or the practice to sift through everything and make decisions that are actually aligned for you, when all of your authority is placed externally and not enough is cultivated internally, you end up with an imbalanced authority, which can often mean you end up in life experiences and situations that you don't want to be in. I call this having a good on paper life. Some of you can probably relate to this. You know, you have a family or you live in a nice house or You know, you have the things that, you know, by American standards, you think you're supposed to have to be happy, but maybe you're still not happy. And and it's not all about being happy, right? Like people based on their uniqueness factors, which I mentioned earlier, which are, you know, where you come from, how you were raised, what your family history and things like that, as well as your conditioning, your values and your beliefs, how you define success or happiness or healthy, satisfying relationships will be different from how I might define it or how other people might define it. So based on your own definition of success and happiness and healthy relationships, which are honestly the three core desires all humans have, how you make choices when your authority is all external, when you're just trying to follow what you think you're supposed to be doing or what you think is right without doing any inquiry into what is actually aligned for you, That's how you end up in these places of not feeling successful or feeling good enough or worthy or not feeling happy or perhaps being so freaking stressed or having so much more on your plate than any one person should. When we are able to trust ourselves, that's like the number one factor in cultivating more internal authority and having a more balanced authority. Because listen, We are a a humanity. We are a family. We're a global community as well as like 
local and more specific communities, depending on, you know, who you are, where you live, what you do, and things like that. We do need each other. Like humans are built for belonging. We're built for community and tribe and to need each other. So you do need to have some external authority. You do need to be able to lean on people outside of yourself. But to do it in a way that's really effective, that's really healthy, you need to have the internal authority that dictates when and how and where you do that and who you can trust and who you shouldn't trust, where you should invest your resources, your time, energy, attention, your money, who you should be helping, who you can ask for help for, what is safe and what isn't, what is wise and what is not. There's so much discernment. Trust is part of discernment. Trust has to do with surrender and control and faith. It just touches so, so, so many things. So I think I'm wrapping up on geeking out on this now. I'm so excited for this tool. Um, Like I said before, it's free to take the first step. You know, after that, there's some subsequent steps you can take. And I've I've priced everything so that it could be highly, highly accept, uh, acceptable. No, um, I mean, it will be acceptable. Uh, whether you accept it or not, I really, that's not up to me. But accessible, highly, highly accessible to a broader range of people. As well, this body of work is not just for women, it's for anyone. As well, I've mentioned those uniqueness factors a couple of times. It's not just for a certain group of people or a certain demographic of people. So um, I encourage you to try out the trust assessment at thetrustassessment.com. Again, like I said, that first step is free. Um, You know, share this with people you know. Again, this could also be a great way to come into better connection and relationship with your friends and family, with your coworkers. I'm so excited as well to be doing more keynote speaking around this topic, to be getting invited into companies and corporations. It's so funny. As soon as I started talking about this, um, I was connecting with some friends who run companies and they're like, oh my God, can you come teach this to my team? Are you going to be doing corporate training programs? And the answer is yes. I'm actually um, working with someone who's been developing corporate training programs for years to be able to develop some really awesome programs for smaller and larger corporations and smaller and larger teams and companies and things like that. So when it comes to trust, the sky is the limit. It's really the balm, B-A-L-M, but it is also the bomb, B-O-M-B. When you have more self-trust, things in life just are easier to navigate. It doesn't mean life stops being challenging, but it does mean that it doesn't feel as challenging. It means that your efforts can be more efficient and effective. It means that you don't have to waste so much time. You don't have to cause harm or be harmed as much because, again, when you trust, you're really able to navigate through things and make better choices that are more aligned for you and your life that really honor and respect you and the people that you care about, that are close to you, who you're responsible for. And again, it connects you in with what you are and aren't responsible for Rather than, and I know a lot of you listening have heard me talk about this in other episodes, especially with Terry Cole, rather than over-functioning all the time, over-giving, over-extending yourself, becoming overwhelmed. Again, whether that's in your health, your wealth, your relationships, or your self-mastery. So I hope you love the trust assessment. I hope you share it far and wide. And I am just so thankful to be doing this work. I'm so thankful for my team. This project was a bear to put together. There's so many moving pieces and so many moving parts. You know, every email you get, someone wrote that. I wrote it. (laughs) I wrote all the emails. But every page you land on, someone built that. Natanya built it. You know, we have a couple different designers. There's photographers who took the pictures, like so much creative work. People had to set up the back end and the systems. So I'm so appreciative. I'm so grateful for the complexity of dealing with and creating a project um, that is this massive. Because at at this level of massiveness, it can also be that much more useful and impactful and helpful. So if you believe in the power of trust, take the assessment, share it with your people, post it online. We could use your raves. Be amazing. Thank you so, 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 so much. And, you know, this is one of those be the change kind of things. Once you upload more trust and higher level trust in your own life, 
you also become like an ambassador for the work just by who you are and how you live. People will notice the difference in you. I actually had another woman from that six week training program tell me recently that people were even commenting on her Facebook pictures, that she looked lighter, that she was glowing and that she seemed happier. So um, the, the benefits are absolutely innumerable to trusting yourself more, to having more trust in life, and as well to encouraging others to do the same. So thank you so, so much. You can head on over to thetrustassessment.com. As well, the show notes for this episode are at untameyourself.com forward slash T as in truth, T as in telling, slash 241. So again, that's untameyourself.com forward slash TT-241.